Hey, hello. How are you? This is a show for everyone else. Instead of going after top 1% of the world, we dedicate this podcast to celebrate the lives of the unsung heroes and self-made artists. Growing up, people don't really tell you that that circus is is possible. This can be my life. No one ever told me that. I, it's not something that people tell you at school. Like, oh, by the way, oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, if you have a passion and that's what you want, there is a way to make a living out of it. It is work, but like you say, at the end of the day, we 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 mostly work for ourselves. We don't really have a buzz. I mean, mm -hmm. the connection is very human. In the circus, no one can tell you what to do. You're always your own master. At the end of the day, you decide whether or not you want to perform a trick because it's your life that's on the line mm -hmm. or, you know, it's, it's your health. Our show, La Galerie, is airs on the very theatrical side of things. Um, Seven Fingers also usually create a very theatrical uh, looking circus. Other circus are closer to contemporary dance. Others will have a lot of live music. Our show also contains live music. There's no rules. So we could be singing, we could be dancing, we could be walking through the audience, we could be involving the audience in it. We could be, you know, working with a crane or, or, or throwing plates, breaking plates like Gandini did. So we are definitely not also alone doing everything alone. Mm -hmm. We have people helping us out a lot, but but I think circus, when you've seen it in the show, it's a lot about, it's not about like how every individual shines, it's about how mm -hmm. as a team we can yeah. build things mm -hmm. together. We try to be good team players because mm -hmm. that's just more fun anyway. Hi there, this is Fei Wu, and you're listening to the Face World Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. And on the show today, we have two guests, Vladimir Lusuba and Connor Houlihan. They're super interesting. So Vlad and Connor are performers or slash acrobats for a show I completely fell in love with. It's called The Gallery. I watched the show uh, with my associate producer, Adam, during the Montreal Circus Festival. It was phenomenal. I know that we have a lot of circus actors, actresses on the show, and it's just because I find their lives to be so fascinating. Imagine people who travel in cohorts around the world, risking their lives every single day. That is something that we often overlook in terms of what their experiences actually bring to their lives. And that's why I want to talk to them and get that information firsthand. And I don't seem to get tired of it after all. So Vlad is a Montreal native and Connor is from the US. I think hopefully by that alone, you'll be able to tell them apart pretty easily. After the performance in Montreal, both of them are traveling to Edinburgh and Scotland next for most of August 2019. So if you're traveling in Europe, I think it would be a fantastic idea to go check it out. Here's a really interesting description of the show, which doesn't really give away anything, but I thought on the description um, of how these uh, theater cinemas decide to describe the gallery is quite fascinating. White. A plume of color suddenly appears. It is promptly cleaned up. The visitors at the exhibit are delighted to return to a monochrome perfection. Little by little, something seems off. Things go haywire. The visitors gradually penetrate another world. The set turns inside out. Color appears once again, but now it is indelible. Amused, intrigued, energized. Would it absorb them? After the worldwide success of its namesake show, Cirque's new production takes you to the boundaries of art. With enticing live music and breathtaking acrobatics, let yourself be drawn into this astounding and unusual exhibit. So, uh, yeah, that is the description, and I think it's uh, pretty accurate, but what you will expect at the end of the show is that you really start to reflect and learn more about yourself. So we had a deep conversation and discussion with Vlad and Connor about the show, of course, 
their own self-discoveries as participants, or more accurately, acrobats in the shows. So Connor's story was that he discovered circus arts and decided to pursue that when he was very young. I think he was only about eight years old. His parents said, figure out a way. So nobody in his family were circus artists themselves. Vlad, on the other hand, he was inspired while he was in college. So he dropped out uh, as an engineering major and he began taking private lessons and literally spent every penny he had on these circus training private lessons. And as we find out uh, very quickly, it was all worth it. Working for the circus is another kind of what I think personal development or meditation for both artists. So their roles as part of the show or in general is referred to as porters. And in French, I believe it means transportation. Um, and the role indicates that they have to be basically at the bottom while supporting one or multiple people uh, on top of them, on their shoulders, on their hands and feet, and, and then flip them around and catching them all at the same time. So Connor and Vlad had to develop something that's hard to put into words. So what do you call that mental awareness to watch a 150 pound person perform a flip and then land on your shoulders without stepping away? And oh, we also talked about diet as well. And you'll be surprised to find out how they do it and how they approach life's many challenges. Without further ado, I'm so glad to be introducing two new Acrobats on Face World podcast, Vladimir Lusuba and Connor Houlihan. Thanks so much for listening and please connect with us at Face World, F E I S W O R L D, everywhere on social media. And while you're there, maybe you want to check out who we are and how we build the business around Face World as well. You can learn all about that on our website, faceworld.com. I'll see you at the end of the show. Tell us about your experience working on Paramore. Uh, I mean, it was it was fun. It was you know, New York is a huge city, and uh, it was fun. I mean, it was a big show. It was a big production. You know, as an American, I grew up loving musical theater, so that was definitely uh, mm -hmm. it was, it was a, a cool experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my my story my story. Um, as a circus artist, started uh, started. I was I grew up in Montreal actually, mm -hmm. which yeah. really yeah, exactly. <laughs> it helps if if you if you weren't born into the circus to discover the circus because we have we have circus here, mm -hmm. which uh, is not true of all other cities. And uh, for me, it started with the circus festival actually nine years ago. So actually, ten years ago, I heard of it. And I heard of people working on that outdoor show. You've probably seen it, the Minute Courant Mon Cirque. And at the time, I was just a normal guy. I was studying software engineering. At a, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> computer science. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a degree in computer science uh, from a CGEV here, so like a technical school. And I was studying software engineering, kind of like... Well, this is the thing that I hate the least. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> one way to do it, right? So that's that. That's where I should go. And also, of course, like the prestige that comes with like being an engineer. I was thinking like, oh, being an engineer is something that's like quite high social value. So this is definitely what I ought to be doing. And on the side, my passion was uh, parkour, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of you know, a little bit of acrobatics in the parks with my friends. We were very much self thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we discovered some of our friends actually worked at the festival the first year. And, and, and I thought, oh, that sounds like a really cool summer thing to do. <laughs> and I auditioned for it, got in, met up with all the students that were, the students from the National Circus School and the Quebec City Circus School that were performing in the festival. And I decided like, wait a minute, <laughs> I can make a live, I can, this can be my life. No one ever told me that. I, I, it's not something that people tell you at school, like, oh, by the way, oh, definitely, yeah. you know, if you have a passion and that's what you want, there is a way to make a living out of it. You know, there are, there are even like schools you can go to that'll teach you everything you need to, to learn to, to make this dream a reality. So I then started training for it. I hired the private coach from Cirque du Soleil and I was spending all my money <laughs> on that, more than on rent, more than everything. I was 
working with that guy three times a, a week. I love him to this day. I remember the first thing he told me, his name is Sergei Volodin. He's one of oh, the man. coaches. You know Sergei? Yeah. yeah. So the, oh, <laughs> the first, to, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's a really lovely guy. And he was like, Vlid, I don't think you can make it, but I will do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I will put all my heart for you. Inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Russian, Russian guy, you know, oh. like, and he did. And it worked. Yeah, and it worked, surprisingly. I don't know how, for the first three years out of four at school, I had an incredible imposter syndrome. I was like, I don't belong here. They probably got the wrong Vlad. Um, but, but then, I mean, I guess it did end up working. The director of the Minute Complètement Cirque actually offered me my first gig, mm -hmm. which was... Uh, a cabaret in Germany. He introduced me to three other guys who all uh, went to yeah, Quebec City the, School. The show with and us as well. yeah, and during the show, yeah, these three guys were like, at the end of that gig, were like, "Hey, do you want to stay with us? We're doing the street show. We're going to tour it all over the world. Wow. Um, do you want to join us?" And so I joined them on the street show. We've toured that show for three years, and then Machine got together and were like, "Hey, do you guys want to create a show with also Connor's group?" Yeah, like Vlad said, growing up, people don't really tell you that that circus is is possible and for me i'm from from minnesota and uh went to a catholic military all boys uh, high school you know so it's very like college prep you go to the school you go to university get a good job da, da, da. but i don't know maybe sophomore junior year you start looking at where you want to go to school and i was like ah, this this isn't for me And there's a, a youth circus program in Minnesota that I had been a part of since I was eight. At that time, there were some older kids that were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go audition for this school in Quebec City or Montreal. So I was like, okay, so this, this is like a real thing. Mm -hmm. And I told my parents, I was like, yeah, I don't want to go to, to real college. Like, I want to go to <laughs> cir circus school. And my dad looked right at me and he was like, you know what? If you can find a school, if you audition, you get in. And if you think you can make a living off of it, then go for it, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you go, uh, Dad. Yeah. And, you know, I made it work. I got into school, trained for three years, um, and I thankfully haven't really stopped working since then. So I've been pretty lucky. Wow. So yeah. I remember one of you graduated in 2014 and the other 2016, around that time? Yeah, I was 2014. Yeah, I'm 16. Wow. Exactly. I, I remember just watching the show that you guys were in. It's called The, the Gallery or La yeah. Gallery. Yeah. La Gallery. Yeah. And it was just the whole time I was really, I always get really worried about you guys because <laughs> we whisper to each other, it's like, you know, I saw you both carrying two other guys on on your shoulders, and I thought to myself, you know, Adam was like, they're 400 pounds of other dudes on their shoulders. <laughs> and it's very scary. I was like, okay, don't move your neck, don't, you know, like, what if, <laughs> you know, do you worry about each other? Do you worry about yourself? How do you get used to that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's training, you know. We, we all take calculated risks. Do we take risks? Yes, but we train, we go step by step to be able to do anything. You know, we don't, just do something uh, à la hache, like uh, yeah, you know, recklessly. Recklessly, it's very much uh, step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. The the that's that's like a, a question that we get asked all the time, and I think it comes from the fact maybe that what we do is very far away from everyday things. But I like to give the example of um, using a knife. Mm -hmm. When you give, you don't give a sharp knife to a kid because you know that he could hurt himself. But you don't think twice about cutting your food with a knife because you're so used to it. It yeah. became part of your everyday life. It's, it's something you've, you know how to handle the risk. And it still happens sometimes that you cut yourself while cutting vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the risk is very little and you know that you won't hurt yourself that much. Mm -hmm. so, so we've just decided that there's, the, there's, there's this um, physiotherapist I follow that talks about acquiring new motor skills. And he says most people stop acquiring motor skills when they, you know, like when they're, when they're kids. Yeah. The last thing you learn to do might be using calories or, or tying your shoelace. And, and then from then on, most people, that's like a limited set of motor skills they have. And that's what they use throughout their whole life. We've decided instead of studying, you know, <laughs> nuclear science or <laughs> instead of becoming, yeah, 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 you know, we've decided to dedicate our lives 
to coming up with new motor skills and mastering them. And so the, the thing you also don't see when you watch the show is all the skills we're currently working on mm -hmm. that we don't feel are solid enough or safe so, enough mm -hmm. to be put in the show. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot. When I started watching the gallery uh, and not really knowing all the details about the show because the website truly tells you very little. And so I didn't quite know what to expect, especially at the beginning of the show with people leaning different directions and the gallery. Um, the canvases are all white. This is without giving away anything, right? Mm -hmm. And the next day, we're at this modern museum <laughs> of Montreal, uh, Montreal yeah. and I found myself just leaning and we're looking at, <laughs> at each other. It's just like, what is going on? I mean, I finally reached an age and it's like, I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm looking at anymore because I have no clue. I don't know whether this is done by a child or someone who's 180 years old. And it's just like, what, what is your feeling or interpretation now you've been in the show versus when you first enter the show? <laughs> that's pretty cool that you, you say that. I mean, that's what I hope that people can take away from seeing our show, you know, is mm -hmm. I, I would hope that everybody has access to seeing a museum at least once in their life. But just like you said, you know, you went to a museum and, and you were asking yourself questions about what we presented because we're proposing mm -hmm. questions to the audience. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I know that we do it too now, and we we will send <laughs> each other photos of like, oh, oh yeah, look yeah. at what we found, like this exhibit. And it was never our intention was was never with the show to poke fun at the contemporary art world, um, nor was it to pretend that we were experts mm -hmm. in like contemporary visual arts. I think it was more like we've all had this experience of being in a gallery and not getting it for yeah, example being like you know you always tell you tell yourself the reason why this piece is on the wall is because it has a value mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. why is it that I can't get to it and so I think we were poking fun at that a little bit so not necessarily the art world but more of uh, how it makes us feel sometimes mm -hmm. and also in the show there's the the character of Pauline. So Pauline's character, and she's the one who doesn't pretend. Mm -hmm. She never does. I think all yeah. of her characters sometimes, most of the times actually pretend, but Pauline is always being very true to herself mm -hmm. and ends up, you know, at the end... Going through... A, going through a, the creative process yeah. or maybe... And, and so maybe also understanding by doing mm -hmm. uh, is something that the show could be about. It's, it's, it's about... You know, you hear that a lot when you go to a gallery and people say, oh, I could have done that. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, but you didn't. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And if you did, maybe it would change your appreciation of that thing. So that's one of the things the show is about. I mean, it's, a, it's about a lot of things. Hi there, it's Faye, and you're listening to my podcast called Face World. Today on our show, we welcome Vladimir Lasuba and Connor Houlihan to our interview. They are circus performers currently performing the show called The Gallery, created by Machine the Cirque. It's a show that has truly changed and transformed my life. I hope you enjoy it. It's many things over the, I guess, only five years that we've been spectators are getting to be friends with people in the circus world, it was the first high art that I actually got. Mm. You know, my parents, so we have these very close friends who we work with who are in face documentary who worked 40 years in the opera world. Mm -hmm. So I do absolutely respect that. That said, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of forced on me as a kid, and I'm like, oh my God, please just make a stop. Mm -hmm. uh, much as we love them, like like brothers. So Cirque was the, through Cirque Soleil first, and then Seven Fingers, mm -hmm. and then, then your show and the other shows we've become aware of, it was the first meaningful art thing. It's like, oh my God, finally I get it. <laughs> and open up that world to us. Um, I mean, I'm glad you're calling circus a high art. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, I think we want to deserve that, that, that label. I don't know if we're being given that label all the time. And at the same time, you know, the, the circus used to be a very popular art. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be, it used to be where the everyday people would go Uh, which is why there is still today a little bit of a stigma around and against circus, the, the stigma that we're trying to fight. But at the same time, we also don't want to 
to get too far away from that popular aspect of art. I think that I think that people who don't like opera and who don't like contemporary dance or theater should come watch a circus show because that might be the the form of art they like. Mm-hmm. The people who are a little bit like attention deficits or hyperactive come watch a circus show like we're all hyperactive and yeah. attention deficits and you know that you know you can take it for what it is you can enjoy it i saw it there was cool stuff great but if you want to go deeper there's also a place for that as well mm-hmm. yeah yeah or at least in contemporary circus we try to mm-hmm. and i think our art is also very ephemeral you 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 know you watch a show that was the show you'll mm-hmm. never see the same show again yeah. even though we've we're going to play that show hopefully hundreds of times we'll never play the same show again yeah. um, so there's this this I find adds value to what we do because it's the, because of the scarcity of it mm-hmm. the the fact that it's not something you can own and put on your wall it's not something that you can play back again and again mm-hmm. even if you film it there's, it's really you know the difference between watching. Uh, video of a circus show and watching the show live there's something you feel when you are in contact with the humans when you have a doubt as to whether or not they will learn the trick that's pretty cool and then and then the 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 work aspects the it, it it's not a nine to five but it's it's also there's like scheduled it does take i don't know about you connor but for me when i have a show especially this show is quite new it's very hard for me to do other things in my day yeah. it's Definitely. not like yeah, yeah it's not like i'll be going to the water slides first <laughs> <laughs> no no i have to focus i usually get in a little bit of like prehab training stretching in the morning then like have my meal I need to focus get to the theater early because mm-hmm. we discuss um notes and notes you know, small we, changes things like that rehearsals <laughs> there is the makeup there is the costumes there is there's a huge aspect of of logistics too we always have to take care of like things break gotta get them fixed the costumes will break the set mm-hmm. will have to be clean so it is work but like you say at the end of the day we 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 mostly work for ourselves we don't really have a bus i mean mm-hmm. technically we have a bus but the connection is very human and and in the circus no one can tell you what to do you're always your own master at the end of the day you decide whether or not you want to perform a trick because it's your life that's on the line mm-hmm. or you know it's it's your health mm-hmm. it's your future so so that i guess for that we're very lucky yeah. um, and not a lot of people see that you know you, you guys you come to see a show and for that hour and a half you know that's cool for <laughs> us it's we're there three four hours before the show you know and we have to kind of arrange our whole day around mm-hmm. that hour and a half that, that we're on stage. Mm-hmm. So. I find that to be very different than what people perceive as the entertainment world. We are using, you know, someone like Britney Spears, or a, I'm, I'm not really following the pop culture anymore, but someone famous, Madonna, mm-hmm. getting on stage. They do a lot of work behind the scenes as well, but essentially all the logistical stuff is already taken care of, paid by them and they walk on stage to walk off stage into a limo whatever <laughs> and what i have witnessed at tohu and many other um shows is that i it, it's so close to my heart to see people getting ready i've seen people getting ready and people standing behind stage and i've seen we're like oh long day the show ends at 10 30 now we gotta go back to the parking lot and drive home that's a lot of work you know and, and i see everyone you know coming back on stage the, with all like drenched in sweat <laughs> And they're like cleaning and wiring and, you know, like it just goes on exactly like you said. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think superstars, sure, you know, they, they get it. And maybe they have the composition it takes and the ego it takes to, to actually believe that people ought to do their, 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 their their bidding. I don't feel that way. I always feel very grateful for the technicians that we have that help us out. That's like, there are the, the, there, you talk about unsung heroes, technicians. Technicians. Wow. They put in... They're there before us, they leave after us. Exactly, wow. yeah. I mean, and they were there before we arrived and they'll be there after we're gone, setting up everything, tearing everything down, making sure every light works, the smoke machine is A1, the, the place is ready. You we, know, um, oh, there's a you know new coat of paint, cool. Yeah, you know, We don't coat. notice it, but they're oh. there and they're doing these things. They do an amazing amount of work. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. And so for, for me, anything I can do that's going to help them a little bit, mm-hmm. make their life a little bit easier, I try to do. Um, and usually, you know, it's just like a karmic thing. Then you also, you know, 
they see that you care about them and you see them and they care about you and they see you. It's a, you know, give and take. Yeah. Mutual benefit, give and take. Exactly. So we are definitely not also alone doing everything alone. Mm -hmm. We have people helping us out a lot, but, but I think circus, when you've seen it in the show, it's a lot about, it's not about like how every individual shines. It's about how, As a team, we can build things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So we try, and, and I think it's it's a code that we live by, and we also try and take that into the company with Machine de Cirque, with the technicians that are around us. We try to be good team players, because mm -hmm. that's just more fun anyway. How do you guys deal with um, injuries? I mean, this has nothing to do with a company. It just happens because I, I happens when I reach out, reach for a towel at the gym. I was like, oh, yeah. what just happened? Welcome to 30. So like, what... What do you guys do doing such an extreme? I mean, warming up definitely. Mm. It, you know, uh, injury prevention is important. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to do what you can and take the necessary steps to not get injured in the movements that you're doing. But at the end of the day, we're humans. We do make mistakes. You know, and we can get injured whether it's just a little bruise or something a little bit more drastic. But yeah, stretching and, you know, we, we always, we have a little physio kit with our, with us on tour and... Um, well, my, my view with injury, first of all, every single circus artist is different. Yeah. Everyone is different in their way of dealing with, with pain. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have someone, you know, like Antoine, he can withstand so much. Antoine is the, um, the other flyer uh -huh. who, who just does all these crazy flips off the board. He yeah. can withstand so much. His tolerance for pain is incredible. Yeah. He, he can, I remember he's the a cat. He's, he's yeah, he's like a, he's cat. a cat. Yeah. He, can, the, he just jumps around. The first public showing we did, he twisted his ankle the oh, day okay. before and was like, did this tape and was like, I'll be all right. And he was all right, you yeah. know, and, and, and that's when you realize like, um, there's a lot of mental, yeah. There's a lot of mental involved in how you deal and react with pain. Mm -hmm. And so like before the stretching, before everything, I think like, first of all, being ready to be injured. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people, how many times have you guys heard? I know I've heard it thousands of times. Like, yeah, I used to do this sport, but then I got injured. And so I stopped the doing any yeah. sports just, just for all my life. Bailed on the whole thing. And that for us is crazy. <laughs> I, you know, William just recovered from an... ACL meniscus tear. I mean, his knee, the, they, everything they in his knee was exploded. destroyed. Yeah. He had surgery six months ago and you've seen him on the stage like yeah. doing all these crazy things. You need to be prepared and ready and it, there's a little bit of like self-destructive <laughs> urge maybe, but it's controlled. Warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Measured yeah. risk. Yeah, yeah, measured risk for sure. And then, and then of course, Doing everything to prevent it, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. Doing everything you can to prevent injuries means, you know, getting enough sleep, mm -hmm. staying hydrated, stretching. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed about injury for me is if I have an area that's painful, mm -hmm. trying to avoid the pain is not going to be what helps. Actually, it helps me to go into the pain mm -hmm. slowly, carefully, and, and negotiate with my body. Be like, how much are you allowing me? right now okay this is how much yeah. cool I hear you I'm not gonna go further than that but the next day asking it again mm -hmm. yeah. and again and like this I found miracle happens I mean it's just like training you know step by step like yeah. Will hurt his knee last summer and you're not just gonna get out of a surgery and start walking and put all your weight on it because I want to get back faster I don't know you take it slow you do your physio you know okay mm -hmm. then you start to put a little weight okay you're walking with crutches up oh, next week you're walking with a cane Mm -hmm. day by day, mm -hmm. you know, and and find out how to push that limit a little bit more and more mm -hmm. and see what your body can handle. And then eventually, you know, you'll be able to come back and maybe not 100%, but you'll be able to manage that a little better. Yeah. And how many times have I seen friends that got injured and their injuries were actually a blessing for them because they mm -hmm. kept on training. Let's say they couldn't use their wrists. So they started using their elbow to grab onto mm -hmm. their apparatus and then yeah. developed amazing mm -hmm. repertoire. Well, yeah. it's, it allows even a creative process. Yeah, creative process, exactly. Right, you know, yeah, exactly. The obstacle is the way. Hi there, it's Faye, and you're listening to my podcast called Face World. Today on our show, we welcome Vladimir Lasuba and Connor Houlihan to our interview. They are circus performers currently performing the show called The Gallery, created by Machine the Cirque. It's a show that has truly changed and transformed my life. I hope you enjoy it. How 
couple of things I'm wondering is, as you guys sort of go through your daily lives, so again, through martial arts, we have some experience with that, but you're walking down a street or you see a ledge or, or a distance. <laughs> is it like, is your life different as you see, oh, I could leap over that or I could, I could catch this? Or is it like regular life and, and, and circus performance are separate? Or do you actually see the world as like a different place now? Walking through airports is, gives us a whole new meaning. <laughs> so after, after doing the show uh, with the, the, with the, the retracting the barrier barriers thing. now, oh, every yeah, time, yes, every, oh, yeah. every single oh, you want time we go to an airport, you know, of course you're going to walk through the line at a, and our minds just explode. We're like, look at the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely affects my daily life. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, just riding my bike, for example, it's it's such a pleasure. Well, because what we learn is to play with anything and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, there, there's there's such a thing as like work, and sometimes I'm like, oh no, I don't feel like it. I'm actually gonna, you know, I'm not gonna take the the stairs. I'm gonna let the elevator take me up. <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, this is a cool bench. Could I do a backflip off of it? Sure, but Am I gonna I'm gonna sit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, our energy is pretty exhausted from 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 the show. Um, but then, I mean, just for, for especially for what we do, physical strength is oh, not yeah. something I just take for granted. I don't mind carrying heavy things yeah. for a long time. We're everybody's mm-hmm. best friend when they need to move. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Noted. When it's moving season, and it's like, <laughs> oh. But it does become part of your life, of course, of course. Not at a high level, but I did like low level competitive billiards. And when I started in the in the eighties and nineties, everyone's style was different because you were a certain kind of person. You train a certain way. By the time I went in the mid to late nineties, there was nothing to watch anymore. Mm-hmm. And everyone, because of you, you YouTube technique. or video cameras, mm-hmm. everyone had exactly the same stroke. Right. And I'm like, why even be here? There's really nothing to see. Right. And I've heard that in the circus world or any kind of world where there's like these amazing tricks, it goes both ways. Same with you know, Faye has some yeah. experience in skateboarding, mm-hmm. where it used to be that you know, if you didn't see, if you didn't go see him perform, you wouldn't see that trick. Right. Now it's on YouTube. Somebody halfway on the globe, some kid who's got nothing else to do all day sees it. Yeah. So that must it. press the, the level. Yeah. So and at true. the same time, oh, I've already seen that. Yeah, I've already seen the seventeen flips. So who can do eighteen? Yeah. That, that's that's got to push both ways too. Yeah. Yeah, and and also though, like you you raise an interesting question, which is: Is circus all about the tricks, or is there something else that's worth seeing when you watch a show? Um, our show is packed with tricks, but I like to think that that's not the thing that touches people the sure. most. Yeah. There's also how we approach the tricks. In our show, for example, we try to break the the formula, the of, yeah, the mold of like, the, here's a number. Here's a little thing we do while we get ready for the next number, mm-hmm. which is here, and then we're gonna, you know, and we've tried to, we've tried to. It's, it's, it's you know, a year, our director likes to tell us. That it, it's it's one movement, you know. Keep it one long <laughs> piece. Of, so yeah. felt. It's yeah. not jazz hands while somebody sets up the exactly, hell out of it. exactly, exactly. Yeah. And we've really tried, and and so I think that's why. If, if you ask me, why should someone who, who's seen a lot of circus show come watch our show? I think just to watch that process actually, to to be surprised with like, oh wait, the set changed. I didn't mm-hmm. notice, mm-hmm. or like, oh now the or or. Wait, I thought we watched the hand to hand number already, but there's still okay. Maybe there's no hand to hand number. Yeah. Maybe it's it's so we've. For, I think that's what we've tried to do. And people will say, for example, that billiard example. Well, I want to see where, where's that person who tried and developed a better technique. Mm-hmm. Could that be done? Mm-hmm. Um, but someone must be trying to do it. You know, it, it's constantly challenging ourselves, and it's mm-hmm. true. Things are going fast, and we posted a video of of a move and. Mm-hmm. I felt flattered that in the next day I started seeing videos of people oh, attempting oh, yeah. it because yeah. I was like, yeah, you saw it here first, All right. you know, like yeah. it's, I think it's cool. It's, I mean, yeah, it, it makes things more accessible, which is a good thing. Yeah. But at the same time, like, should, should we kind of focus on ourselves and what we're doing a little more? Uh, you know, to recommend the show without giving anything away, I found a real smooth transition uh, first asking about the costumes, right? It's almost like street clothes, formal clothes, jackets and, and, and suit pants. And the almost a sci-fi world that was created. So yeah, you know what I'm talking about? I wanna, yeah, without yeah. giving anything away, I wanna ask anything you wanna say about that or how it was created or how it was, like the rules of that world that we're discovering as we watch the show, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, I mean, the yeah, the the, the costumes were, were in a gallery, were, were chic. It's the cocktail hour, you know, we're... Mm-hmm. 
a little snobby, if you will. Yeah. And then we take you somewhere completely different. Yeah, I, li- I like to think it's like David Lynch's Alice in Wonderland mm. kind of kind of universe where where yeah things start to get a bit strange, um, which which makes. I think it's it's a good contrast with the sterile atmosphere mm-hmm. atmosphere of the gallery at the first and, and everyone being all yeah white yeah. and immaculate. So it's it is a metaphor f- for for yeah I guess what it takes also to 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 create these places. Our idea was to have this parallel universe or the looking, looking glass, glass yeah. kind of wow. kind of uh, experience where these people live yeah i just couldn't recommend the show more because it was so different than at the beginning i was like oh interesting and part of me was thinking i need to see shows like this more honestly as opposed to have a great relationship with Cirque du Soleil but i would love to see more of these different shows now Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to shows that are similar to each other or you know there's a box that there has to be a certain budget has to be certain colors Mm -hmm. everybody has to be in costumes there are so many circus companies out there There there's so many different shows are they better or worse than each other? I think that's, you know, mm-hmm. it's up to whoever sees them. Yeah. But one thing about Machine de Cirque and what we do, I, th- I think, is there's a, there's a part of us, mm-hmm. uh, like, very personal part of us on stage that's, that's yeah. giving it to you guys mm-hmm. in the audience, you know? It's yeah. true, yeah. What you see is actually who we are. Mm-hmm. There's also, you didn't mention it, but there's also a difference of price in the ticket, even. Yeah. So so usually a smaller circus company is affordable. The shows, most of the times, are amazing mm. anyway. And yeah. like you say, you really feel a kind of intimacy. You really, you really feel like you're close to people. You can almost touch them. Sometimes you can even touch them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and circus doesn't really mean much. We haven't tried to define it. I'm glad you didn't ask us that question because it's a really <laughs> difficult question to answer. <laughs> But what I what I know, what you can tell, I mean, our show, La Galerie, is airs on the very theatrical side of things. Um, Seven Fingers also usually create a very theatrical uh, looking circus. Other circus are closer to contemporary dance. Others will have a lot of live music. Our show also contains live music. Mm-hmm. So circus today really is just a word that yeah. that means it's live performance. There's a very high amount of chance that you'll see some impressive mm. body tricks mm. but apart from that there's no rules yeah. so we could be singing we could be dancing we could be walking through the audience we could be involving the audience in it we could be you know working with a crane mm. or, or or throwing plates breaking mm. plates like Gandini did uh-huh. we could be you know cross-dressing and covering mm. ourselves with yeah. paint or there's no rules so you never really know what you're going to see but you know for sure it's going to be something extraordinary which yeah you know i, I encourage everybody just go mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. if you have access to it and you're able mm-hmm. go yeah. no, you know go see a show take a chance yeah for mission to say if you don't know who we are take a chance mm-hmm. you know yeah. any it, you know whatever company whatever show oh yeah if you see a photo oh that might look interesting awesome are you guys traveling to uh, very soon to other cities potentially uh, yeah we go to <laughs> Scotland we're, we're heading to Edinburgh for the French yeah. festival oh yeah. yeah we'll be spending the month of uh, August, August there and there is an option for <laughs> us to be going to the States, actually, yeah. in May 2020, end of Boston. No, June, Boston. June 2020. Well, I, I have to ask this question because every time I, after I interview circus artists or performing artists, people are like, why didn't you ask them about their diet? <laughs> and their, oh, you yeah. know, how they, because, you know, you have to be health conscious. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you have to make sure your flyer doesn't go over. For what I noticed is the most important kind of, uh, of, of hygiene mm-hmm. is, is just like basic body hygiene and basic mind hygiene. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just doing, doing things, yeah, not, not in excess. Yeah, well, I just hope that um, whoever listens to this um, is inspired to go watch some live performance. It doesn't mm-hmm. really have to be circus, mm-hmm. any any live performance, because there's something about watching other human beings doing amazing things mm-hmm. uh, that is so inspiring. And sometimes, you know, like 
that's what you need to be to feel inspired and then to to give you that motivation mm -hmm. to like you said you know mm -hmm. start being physical or mm -hmm. tackle this thing you've wanted to do for a while mm -hmm. um, you, you know any anything sometimes like motivation comes from watching other people do thing mm -hmm. do things that's why that's why I think what we do is cool too mm -hmm. wow yeah. I can't find a better place to end this. And thank you so much out thank of your you busy schedule. Yeah. Hi there, it's me again. I want to thank you very much for listening to this episode and I hope you were able to learn a few things. If you enjoyed what you heard, it will be hugely helpful if you could subscribe to the Face World podcast. It literally takes seconds. If you're on your mobile phone, Just search for Phase World Podcast in the podcast app on iPhone or an Android app such as Podcast Addict and click subscribe. All new episodes will be delivered to you automatically. Thanks so much for your support. <laughs>